So the new heterogeneous volume actor and sparse volume textures in Unreal Engine 5.3 and UE5 main allow us to use actual VDBs in our workflow for Unreal Engine. And it actually does work, as you can see right here. So this is a quick overview of how we get those in. So first you want a VDB. Um, so you, you either have simmed it in Embergen or Houdini or downloaded it from online. Um, the most important thing I've noticed is that uh, make sure that you are not using dots to denote um, in your file name because Unreal will try and name it that and it causes a little bit of issues I've found. So um, underscores until the dot before the extension for VDB. So I've got a 100 frame sequence here. If we just drag that in, we get VDB import options, which at this, this particular VDB just has density, but you can import other attributes, which can be handy for kind of temperature and things like that. So it says it's found 100 files in the sequence. We hit import. And then right here, we have a VDB drain kind of sparse volume texture right here. So you can see it tells us the volume resolution of the VDB, etc., and the source files. So next, what you want to do is drop a heterogeneous volume uh, actor right here. At the moment, this is assigned into the into a material with one I've Im already imported before. And if we have a look in here, uh, we've got a few options that are different than a normal actor. You've got the volume settings here, so the volume resolution um, and the animate tick. So if I untick this, we could just get the first frame of the VDB. Uh, ticking it plays automatically. I'm not sure yet if there's a way to get it to be tied to a sequencer for perfect rendering, but I'm sure that's coming eventually. You've got the frame rate here as well. We can change that to lower frame rate or we can go higher. Now, what you can see here is it's gotten very blurred when I've upped it to 60. And that's because um, it's essentially resolution of the volume is too high to be going at that speed uh, performantly. So it mips down levels and blurs the image. So if you find that you're kind of importing your VDB and it's kind of blurring, then that's probably the issue. Um, you need to lower the resolution or the frame rate of your simulation. So in terms of the material that's assigned, it's pretty basic. Uh, I'm using substrate here, uh, but it's the same kind of setup from this point onwards um, for um, a standard material. Just got an albedo going to an albedo and then we're feeding all our data into the extinction. Um, just got a density multiplier. Now you've got two um, two sparse volume texture sample things. The standard one actually doesn't currently work with uh, animated caches, doesn't do anything. So you have to use a sparse volume texture sample parameter, which is right here. And I've just set the default to the VDB I'm using. Uh, so in here, we just do need to set the, our UVs. So the way I've done that um, is we just get our local position here. Um, I'm flipping the uh, Y and Z axis because uh, this VDB is from Houdini, just so that the orientation is correct. And then we've got a scale multiplier to multiply the scale if we wanted. But because this is local position here, um, we can move the actor around nice and easily and even rotate it, etc. So that works pretty well. Um, but yeah, it's super basic material. Um, you get really nice result, as you can see here and we get like kind of, uh, you know, proper lighting on it, etc. One cool thing I found as well, if you didn't want to use heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous volume rendering for it, if you disable it with r.heterogeneous volumes zero, it actually reverts to that, that actor, reverts to in um, basically injecting it into the volume fog of the scene. So you can see it's much lower quality uh, than what's uh, uh, able to be done with the heterogeneous volume. Um, but, you know, for lower end machines, that could make sense. But keep note, the main um, cost with these is um, by far the actual playback of the cache. So you have to be really efficient with your resolution of your VDBs uh, to get a nice result. I highly recommend just playing around with it, exporting the same VDB and resampling it in like Houdini to different uh, voxel sizes uh, so you can see the difference. But you can get some really good results uh, like you can see here in like a game context um, and you get all that nice shadowing and such. So yeah, be sure to have a look at it and I'll see you next time.